Hi and welcome to another episode of Peacemake TV. In today's video for WordPress, we're going to be revisiting a topic we've covered previously, and that's the setup process for WooCommerce. Now, if you watched the original video and you try to install it and follow along now, you're going to find that there are a few steps that are quite different. So in this video, I'm going to show you the entire process from installing the software right the way through at the basic setup routine. I'm going to show you what's changed and where the different features are actually now installed. We're also going to take a look at some of the other options that are part of the setup to ensure that when you get this all set up and configured, everything is as you want it to be. Now, obviously, this is just a basic introduction to setting things up. If you want to cover things like shipping charges and taxes and so on, there are already videos out covering that in a lot more detail. So once you set things up, I'd recommend checking those videos out to make sure that you're up to speed with how to get everything configured properly. So without further ado, let's go into WordPress and take a look at how we can install WooCommerce and take a look at what's changed since the previous video. Okay, so I've jumped into WordPress now and as you can see, it's just a clean install. There's nothing set up on here at all. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through step by step how to install and set up the new version of WooCommerce. So to do that, all we need to do is jump over to the plugin section and we're going to come down to add new. We're going to go through then and we're going to search for WooCommerce. We're just going to come to the top and just type in WooCommerce. And we're going to search the database for that. And once we find that, we'll start the install process. So we click on install now. We'll let that download. Once it's downloaded, we'll go through and set everything up. Once we've done that, we're just going to click on activate to switch the plugin on. Once we've done that, we can go through then and we can start setting all the different parameters that we go through the wizard. So let's activate that. Now you can see if you've seen the previous video or you've installed WooCommerce previously, you're going to be used to this wizard, but you're going to find a few things have changed on here. One of the first things you want to know is where is your store located? So we're going to go through the process step by step. So to start off, I'm in the UK. We'll just put in some fake address information and we'll say my city. And we'll go for a postal code of NP7. Okay, so we put that basic information in. The next thing we're going to do is what currency we're going to use. Well, it's already located and set. We're using pounds, which is fine. Then the next thing we've got is what kind of product you plan on selling. So we have a couple of options available in here. We can sell physical products, digital products, which are digital products that don't have a physical form. So, for example, digital downloads like ebooks and tutorials and things like that. Or we can choose both. Well, for this example, we're going to specify we're going to have both in there. That's fine. You can see underneath that, we've got the option that say allow WooCommerce to collect non-sensitive diagnostic data and usage information. Personally, I'll always uncheck that because I don't want anything that I do on my store to be sent back and used and stored and done whatever I want with. So I'll always say no to that. But obviously, that's entirely up to you. Next thing we want to do is click on Let's Go, and we'll jump over then to the next section, which is what payment gateway or gateways we're going to use. So as always, WooCommerce ships with a range of different payment gateways. You can just configure or set up the ones that you want at this point. So what we're going to do is I don't want to use Stripe. We've got to uncheck that. You can see we then got PayPal, PayPal Standard, or we've got offline options. Well, for this example, we're going to use PayPal Standard. You can see it's going to pull up the email address that I put in there, which is fine. And if I want, I can click on offline payments. And what I tend to do is set up something like uh, a cash on delivery or something just so I can run through an order process without having to actually set up the physical payment gateway while I'm setting everything up. So for this example, I'm going to say cash on delivery. So I've set up the payment gateways I want to work with and just click on continue. That's then going to take us over to the shipping option. Now we can go up and set up a couple of different options to do with the shipping. So we can set up a basic shipping zone to start off with. And we can also set up any shipping zones that are not covered to have their own basic payment thing. So now if we take a look at the previous video I've set up and showing you how to create payment zones and things like that, it's going to go into a lot more detail than we need to do here. But this is a good starting point where you can at least put in some of the basic information you need to start shipping your product if that's applicable to you. So we've got some basic options here. You can see we can set a fixed rate because we'd already set up the zone for where we are in this example of the United Kingdom in the UK. You can see that we've got the option for a flat rate. I can expand that out and I can choose flat rate or free shipping. If I choose flat rate, I need to actually put in the flat rate charge that I want to apply. If I don't want to set that up, so for example, I'm dealing with digital products, I might say, well, I don't want to do that. I can check that and we can say now that's disabled. For this example, we'll put that on and we'll set a flat rate of, let's just say, 295. 
Next up, we've got locations not covered by your UK zone. So you can see our shipping zone of UK is our base zone. So if we allow ourselves to sell to other countries, we may want to set up a zone for each of the different countries. But like I say, we're keeping it simple. So we say locations not covered by your flat rate. And what we'll do is we'll put a 495 shipping in there just for argument's sake. Again, if I wanted to, I could easily disable this option as well. Finally, we've got the two different options to deal with weight and dimensions. Now, this is set in itself to kilograms and centimeters. Well, the dimension unit I want to choose is millimeters, but you can see we've got a range of different options there. Just choose the one that applies to the typical products that you're going to sell inside your store. So we set up our shipping methods. We set up the basic weight and dimension units. We click on continue. That's going to take us through then to the extra section. Now, the extra section allows us to do a couple of different things. You can see we've got a storefront theme, which is the theme that they've developed now, which is a sort of a blank template theme to use with WooCommerce. If you want to install that, you can do that at this point. For this example, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to use a theme of my own if I went on to develop this into a fully fledged site. You can see we've also now got another new option, which is automated taxes. This is powered by a WooCommerce service. Now, the thing to take into consideration is that might sound like a really good thing, but if you do, you've got to install some additional plugins. This is closely tied to the Jetpack plugin suite, which is, again, part of WordPress. So if you think this is something you'd like to use, then you can activate that. Then you'll go through to the next stage, which it actually asks you to go through and install that and do all the different settings. We're going to leave that off for now. We're going to click on continue. That'll take us through now. You can see because the next step, if we wanted to link this up through the Jetpack, we could do that at this point. I'm not going to do that, but again, like I say, if this is something you intend to use and you like some of the tools and the different plugins and add-ons you have as part of Jetpack, by all means, go through and connect this up to your Jetpack account, and then you can go through and activate any of those different extras that you want on there. So if we scroll down, you can see I've got the option very small at the bottom, which is very easy to miss if you're not careful, and that's skip this step. So we're going to click on skip this step, which is going to go over then to the ready option. You can see now we're ready to start selling our products. Do we want to sort of have tips and tricks sent through to us? If we do, then we can, it'll see, it'll put in our email address and we can just simply click on yes, please. And that will then send us emails on a regular basis. Again, entirely up to you. What we can do now is we can create our first product by clicking on this button. We could import products if we've already got a database saved or we want to sort of pull in sort of sample data as part of our WooCommerce store to set things up. Alternately, you can just say return to dashboard and we'll then go back and we've pretty much set everything up. So let's just click on that option. That'll now take us back to our WordPress dashboard and WooCommerce is set up for us. So if you've previously set up WooCommerce, you'll know as part of the setup wizard, you are asked if you want to create the default WooCommerce pages, things like your account, your checkout page, your basket, and so on. Well, you may have noticed that during this wizard, we don't get asked to do that. So has it actually created them? Do we need to go and do anything else? Well, if we take a look at the pages section and we click on all pages, you'll actually see that all those pages have been created for us. So we don't need to go through it. They've just taken that step out of the wizard process. So they're already there set up ready to start working with. So apart from that, what else has changed inside WooCommerce? Well, if we come over and take a look at the settings section, you'll see that we've got a few different options and different things in there that have sort of been added in. Now you'll see that when we went through the wizard, we had the option to go through and set up things like our address and so on. So if you'd missed that step out, you could easily come into the generals tab on here and you could go through and set up all those different options on there. So all the kind of things you expect to be there, it's already there. Whether you chose the wizard or you skipped the wizard, you can still access all of those settings directly from within the control panel itself inside WooCommerce. If we take a look at products, for example, you'll see everything is pretty much set in there. We can also set our weight unit dimensions if we decide we wanted to change that. So display and downloadable products and all those kinds of things are still in there. So everything you expect to be there is all there. And that's pretty much how we go through the wizard of setting up a WooCommerce store. Like I say, I've already covered things like adding products in there, adding shipping charges, and all those things in a lot more detail in their own dedicated videos. So I'd recommend checking out the playlist that I've got for WooCommerce videos and tutorials. Okay, so that pretty much wraps up the video. We've taken a look at the changes inside WooCommerce. We've seen how to set things up effectively and easily. So by the end of this, you should now have a fully fledged e-commerce store ready to start adding products to.
Well, I hope you found the video useful. If you did, please hit that subscribe button to be kept up to date with all the new content we add every single week. Don't forget to hit the little bell icon to be notified when new videos are released. And if you've got any comments, questions or feedback on this video, please pop those in the comments section below. And until next time, take care.